Hello, hello, we're in southern Tenerife uh, right now and here we have an alignment of Sintacones that's part of the southern rift arm of Tenerife and uh, here we have a whole series of Sintacones that are well lined up like uh, beads on a string and uh, if we move a little bit here to the right we have one of the finest ones, one of my favorite ones this is Montaña Los Arales and Los Arales is marked by a little landslide that excavated the interior parts of the cone and you see this brownish core but let's quickly look in the other direction first here's a few more cones going all the way to the coast and the one at the coast is Montaña Amarilla Amarilla is purely hydromagmatic from interaction with the seawater while the others are dominantly strombolian and here uh, we have Los Arales again. Los Arales is a bit of an exception because it actually has this interior brownish core which hints at hydromagmatism. There's a lot of palagonite in there and you need that. Uh, uh, you need water to make palagonite. There's also a lot of bomb sacks and fine grained uh, deposits in there. Maybe I can go a little bit closer here. And uh, this was a hydromagmatic phase that uh, initiated the growth of Los Arales. Higher up we get into a mixed facies and eventually into a rather black to a dark reddish oxidized strombolian face. So uh, this cone started its life as a hydromagmatic eruption, as a hydromagmatic cone, and then gradually it migrated into a more strombolian type of eruption. So it's a progressive eruption style that we're seeing here. And uh, indeed, in the transitional facies, my student, Hilary Clark, she found um, diatoms. So there's good indication that water was in fact involved in the lower parts. So we see this in the textures, we see this in the uh, rock record, and we see this in the minerals, but also there's fossils in there. Uh, intriguingly here, we have a little bit of um, an excavation and here is a rock rose. It's a filled lava channel, so there was lava activity also associated with Los Arales and uh, this is very similar to what we see today in La Palma uh, 2021 eruption we have a center cone activity strombolian eruption but also lavas being emitted from the cone now one of the key features of course is how did the water get into this eruptive deposit or how did the uh, magma interact with the um, uh, water and I guess we have to think a little bit about the situation in which uh, Arales is located and you see it here R Arales is actually located in a little barranco in a little valley so uh, there could have been seasonal water in the valley that uh, the magma could have hit the other option is that uh, there could have been uh, um, groundwater shallow level groundwater that could have played a role and indeed uh, the map here marks a spring and uh, the spring is dry these days but uh, back in those days it might have been uh, an indication or it is an indication that back in those days there could have been groundwater present and uh, this could have well been the reason why the magma coming up in this particular place was interacting uh, with water with the hydrosphere uh, producing strombolian uh, eruptions only after initially being hydromagmatic. From a hazard point of view this is very interesting because it means that what we generally consider as a low risk um, i.e. the Sintercoin situation could actually become quite unpleasant if by accident groundwater gets involved and this is an important realization. Many of the hazard maps here they look at uh, these uh, potential eruptions as strombolian only while of course the evidence here is very clear there could have been uh, there could be also interaction with the hydrosphere and therefore free magmatic explosions are a reality to be considered. So thank you and last look at the Arales and uh, let's see whether I can zoom out a little bit here we go and um, well thank you for your attention and I hope you enjoyed that all the very best and I hope to speak to you soon